ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد then to continue with al aqida al tahawiya the creed of imam al tahawi with the explanation of shaykh salih al fawzan hafizahullah then we reached point number 8 the point that in shaykh al fawzan's explanation is numbered as point number 8 rahimakallah وَلَا يَكُونُ إِلَّا مَا يُرِيدُ And nothing occurs except what he wills. Meaning nothing occurs except what Allah wills. Shaykh al-Fawzan said in his explanation, This contains an affirmation of Al-Qadr, pre-decree, and an affirmation of Al-Irada, of Allah's will. Allah's Irada, Allah's will. Both of these two things. It contains an affirmation of Al-Qadr, pre-decree, and of Allah's Irada, His will. And if we remember that the levels of pre-decree that the people of knowledge mention, the levels of pre-decree that we need to know are four levels. Maratib al-Qadr are four. Firstly, al-ilm, knowledge, that Allah knew everything. Allah has always known everything that was going to be. And the second level, al-kitabah, that Allah wrote that down in the preserved tablet. And thirdly, al mashia that Allah willed that that would occur. And fourthly, Al-Khalq, that Allah actually created that thing. Whatever occurred, Allah created it. So as we see, Allah's will, His mashia His universal will, is the third level of this. That everything that, that occurs in the creation, then it is by the will of Allah. So as Shaykh Fawzan said, with regard to this heading here, or this point, وَلَا يَكُونُ إِلَّا مَا يُرِيدُ Nothing occurs except what he wills. He said, Alhamdulillah. He said, so this contains an affirmation of pre-decree and an affirmation of Allah's will. So nothing exists within his kingdom and nothing occurs within his creation whether events or things except that Allah willed it to occur. He the perfect and most high willing it with his irada al kawniya willing it with his universal will. What, meaning that whatever occurs in the creation, Allah will that it would be so. By His universal will. Al irada al kawniya. And we've had previously the point that the people of the Sunnah they distinguish between, and as Shaykh Falah, Hafidhullah, when he was here, he made it very clear as well that the people of the Sunnah they distinguish between Allah's universal will. That which he wills will certainly occur within the creation. Meaning that which will inescapably occur. It has to occur. That is Allah's irada al kawniya Allah's universal will. And then there is Allah's will, which is his irada al shariya Allah's legislational will. Which corresponds with that which he loves and is pleased with. So the Shaykh here is making the point 
that everything in the creation exists by the will of Allah, meaning which will? By His universal will. Al irada al kawniya. And he quotes an ayah as proof. Surah Yasin, the 36th Surah, Ayah 82. With the explanation, and his affair, when he wills something, is just that he says to it, be and it is. This ayah referring to Allah's irada kawniya, Allah's universal will. That, that whichever, whatever Allah wills will be within the creation. And that must inescapably occur. And Shaykh al-Fawzan said, So every good and every evil occurs by Allah's universal will. Al-irada al kawniya So nothing escapes from his will. And this contains a refutation of the Qadariyyah, those who deny Al-Qadr pre-decree. Those who claim that the person himself, he is the one who creates his own actions and produces his own actions. And high Ex- highly exalted is Allah above that which they say. And the Shaykh explains how this point is an error, he says. Because this is a declaration, I mean the saying of the Qadariyya, the deniers, they call the Qadariyya, I mean the deniers of the Qadr, deniers of the pre decree. Those who say that mankind creates his own actions. The Shaykh said, because this saying of theirs is a declaration of Allah's being unable. And it is a statement that there are things in his creation which he, the perfect and most high, does not will. And they're saying that the man- mankind does things which Allah doesn't will them to do. So they escape, they manage to escape from Allah's will, and they do things which are outside Allah's will altogether. The Shaykh said, So this is to describe him with deficiency. Because everything which occurs within the creation, whether good or evil, then it occurs by his will. So the Shaykh is there refuting the saying of those Qadariyya. Those who are saying that it amounts, they're saying it amounts to declaring a deficiency in Allah, a deficiency in His will. <coughs> and that they get the better of Allah's will, they escape from Allah's will, and they do things that Allah doesn't will them to do at all. Then Shaykh Fawzan said, So He creates good for a wise purpose. And he creates that which is evil for a wise purpose. Again, a very important point. It's not just the case Allah creates good and he creates evil and there's no wisdom in that. The Shaykh said, Rather, Allah creates that which is good for a wise purpose. And he creates that which is evil for a wise purpose. So from the aspect of its creation then it is not an evil because it is created for a tremendous wisdom and a tremendous goal which is to test and to try and to distinguish that which is foul, that which is foul from that which is good and in order to reward the people upon their righteous deeds. And to recompense the people for their evil deeds. And he was wise in that. He, the perfect and most high. He did not create anything without purpose. So the Shaykh 
makes the point that the people of the Sunnah emphasize that in whatever Allah creates and in whatever Allah does, there is wisdom. Contrary to the saying of the, some of the people of deviation who just says Allah just does some things, we, we don't ask about them, He just does them and that's the end of it. No, the people of the Sunnah hold that whatever Allah does or whatever Allah creates, it is for a great wisdom. Sheikh Fawzan just made the point here that that which exists which is evil then in its creation we don't say in its very creation it's, e it's evil or the creation of it isn't evil. No. We say that which exists which is evil Allah created it for a great and wise purpose. Meaning so that there would be good in the creation and there would be evil. And then Allah would there thereby test the people and try the people and distinguish who would choose the good and who would choose the evil therefore who would be rewarded and who would be punished and that's where Sheikh Fawzan ends this particular point and with regard to the explanation of Ibn Abil Iz the famous explanation of al aqidah al Tahawiyah of Ibn Abil Iz then we'll just quote a section from there where he says وَلَا يَكُونُ إِلَّا مَا يُرِيدُ and nothing exists except what he wills Ibn Abil Iz said this contains a refutation of the saying of the Qadariyya and the Mu'tazila because they say Allah willed Iman, true faith from all of the people but the unbeliever he is the one who willed unbelief for himself I mean they're trying to say that for the unbeliever Allah willed and wanted from him and Allah willed from him that he would be a believer but the kafir got the better of Allah's will he is like he escaped from Allah's will got the better of it and he became an unbeliever by his own will the explainer said, and this saying of theirs is corrupt and is rejected. Since it is contrary to the book and the sunnah and to correct intellect. And it is the well-known matter of al-qadr, pre-decree. And something in explanation of that will follow insha'Allah ta'ala. Then he said, and these people mean the ones who deny pre-decree. He said, they are called the Qadariyya because they denied pre-decree. I mean, and they are at one extreme, as we've had before. At the one extreme with regard to pre-decree, at the one extreme, we have those who deny it. Those who deny that Allah pre-decreed the affairs. But he knew what they were, He knew everything would occur, and so on, to the rest of the... He wrote it, he created it, he willed it, and he created it. The Qadariya, they deny. At the one extreme, they deny it, pre-decree. Or deny part of it. And at the other extreme, we have the Jabariya. Those who say the people have no free will, the people are forced to do whatever they do. So the explainer said, and likewise the Jabariya are also called the people of Qadr, the people of pre-decree. They're also called Qadariya, because there's two groups of Qadariya. The Qadariya who deny pre-decree and the Qadariya who affirm it and go beyond bounds in it which is the Jabariya. Those who say man has no free will at all. Then he said, and this name, the Qadariya, is mostly used for the first group. I mean, when you see the term in the book, the Qadariya, it usually means those who deny the pre-decree. Then he said, as for the people of the Sunnah, then they say that even though Allah willed that sins would occur, however, He does not love them and He is not pleased with them. And He did not command them. And this is the point where the people of Sunnah distinguish themselves from both of these deviant groups. They say, the people of the Sunnah say that even though Allah willed sins to occur, However, he does not love them. He is not pleased with them. And he did not command them. 
Rather, he hates them and is angry with them and he forbade them. This is the saying of all of the Salaf. Those who say, ما شاء الله كان وما لم يشاء لم يكن. Whatever Allah willed occurs. And whatever he did not will does not occur. And then he mentioned after he carries on for a while, for a short part, a paragraph, and then he says, and the verifiers from the people of the Sunnah, they say, Al Irada will in the book of Allah is of two types. Irada, Allah's will, referring to his pre decree, which is his universal will. And the second type is his irada ashariya, his legislational will, which comprises his love and his pleasure. So this is a very important point, and it can never be stressed. As Sheikh Falah, Hafizullah, stressed the point that this is a, an extremely crucial point, which is why we keep mentioning the point that the people of the Sunnah they are the only ones who make this distinction. That the other deviant sects, on the one hand, the Qadariya those who deny pre-decree, they only affirm one type of will for Allah. And when they see that sins occur, they say, Allah doesn't will sins, He doesn't love sins, He doesn't want them to happen. So therefore, these sins occur outside the will of Allah. Things occur outside the will of Allah. And the unbelievers, they can do things that Allah doesn't want them whatsoever to do. And at the other extreme, we have... <coughs> The Jabariya, those who say mankind is forced and compelled to do whatever he does, to do whatever he does. And they say person is just like a feather in the wind. He has no choice and no free will. Rather, Allah forces the people to do whatever they do. And the reason for their deviation is because both of them they don't distinguish between these two two wills. Allah's universal will, which is a corresponds to Allah's Mashia, Allah's universal will. Allah willed whatever was going to take place should take place. And then the second is al-irada al-ashariya, Allah's legislational will, which corresponds with Allah's love, that which he loves, and that which he is pleased with, and that which he commands. And just a few points in addition before we move on. Then Sheikh Yahya al Hajuri, Hafizullah, when he was over here a few years ago, going through this book, or this part of the book, and he made a few points. Amongst them were the following. Firstly, he mentioned the distinction between the universal will of Allah and his legislational will. And he said, with regard to us, then we do not ask and go into Allah's creational or Allah's universal will because that is from the knowledge of Allah. How Allah's will, the creation to be, what He has willed will happen in the, in the past, the present and the future, all of that, that is known only to Allah. And it's not for us to dig into that. He said, rather, what is required from us is the second. Al-irada as shariya Allah's legislational will, meaning that which Allah has legislated, that which Allah loves, that which Allah is pleased with, and that which Allah has commanded. That's what we should busy ourselves with finding out. He mentioned, and this is what is required from the whole of the creation. And he mentioned the ayah, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ The ayah from Surah Al-Dhariyat, with the explanation, and I did not create jinn and mankind except that they should worship me alone. And it says upon us to therefore find out what Allah has legislated upon worship, as worship. That's the purpose in our creation, to worship him to find out what he legislated for us from worship and then to do it. So relating to his legislational will. Another point the Sheikh made 
was that the person who says that Allah did not create evil, because you find people like that, they come out and say, no, Allah didn't create evil. Then one who says that, he is a Qadari, a Mu'tazili. He's from the Qadariya and he's from the Mu'tazila. Because as we have mentioned, the people of the sun say, Allah created that which exists, which is evil. There are things in the creation which are evil. Who created them? Allah created them. But we make the point that he created them for a wise purpose. But there are some people who say, no, evil, Allah didn't create it. Things which are evil, Allah did not create it. The, un the unbeliever created his own action. His own evil action, the unbeliever himself created it. And that's wrong. That's the saying of the Qadariya and the Mu'tazila. A fourth point the Shaykh made was the reason for the misguidance of the Qadariya. Where, where did they go astray? He said, their false ideas entered upon them because they did not distinguish between al-irada al-kawniya and al-irada al shariya They didn't distinguish between Allah's universal will and his legislational will. And the last point he made was that with regard to the creation of that which, which is evil, and he mentioned that Allah, he is the one who created Iblis. Iblis, the evil one, Allah created him. And Allah, of course we don't doubt that Iblis is, is totally evil. And yet his creation was for an extremely wise purpose. So that Allah should test his servants through him. And Allah created evil so that he should be aware who will obey him and then reward him and who will disobey him and therefore punish him. And he quoted a number of ayahs in that regard that affirm the fact that Allah created everything, that which is good and that which is evil. Amongst them, the ayah saying of Allah the Most High, Allahu khaliqu kulli shay. Allah is the creator of everything. Allah created everything, whether good or bad. <coughs> then with regard to the next point, point number nine, the saying about Tahawi, rahimahullah, وَلَا تَبْلُغُهُ وَلَا تَبْلُغُهُ الْأَوْهَامُ وَلَا تُدْرِكُهُ الْأَفْهَامُ He is not reached by people's conjecture. Nor can he be grasped by their understanding. Meaning that Allah is not reached by people's thoughts and conjectures. And he can't be grasped by their understanding. Shaykh al Fawzan said So Allah, the one free of all imperfections and the most high, cannot be encompassed. So Allah is greater than everything. He the perfect and most high. And he quotes an ayah, يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ وَلَا يُحِيْتُونَ بِهِ عِلْمًا Surah Taha, the 20th surah, ayah 160. Or rather ayah 110. It's a bit of fluff on my page. Oh, what's that? It's now high at 110. So just repeat that. Surah Taha, 20th Surah, I 110. With the explanation, He, Allah, knows whatever is in front of them and whatever is behind them. And they do not comprehend Him with knowledge. They, the people, do not comprehend Allah with knowledge. Shaykh al-Fawzan said, So Allah, the one free of all imperfections, He is known. He is known, meaning the people know of Allah. The people know of Allah. Allah is known. However, 
He is not comprehended and encompassed by that. Just to make, clarify that slightly. I mean, the people know about Allah. Indeed, the believers know about Allah. They know of Allah and they know of their Lord. But they don't comprehend Him and encompass Him with their knowledge. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullah. And the, then the believers know about Allah they know of Allah but their knowledge doesn't comprehend him and encompass him he said so Allah is greater than everything so thoughts cannot imagine him and it is not permissible for a person to say about Allah except what he the perfect said about himself or what his messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, said about him. <coughs> so the point there, that the people know about Allah, the believers know about Allah, but they don't comprehend him with their knowledge. They don't, they don't grasp him and encompass him and catch him with their knowledge. Then the tenth point وَلَا يُشْبِهُ الْأَنَامِ And he does not resemble the creation. Allah does not resemble the creation. Shaykh al-Fawzan said, This is like the wording which has already preceded. وَلَا شَيْءَ مِثْلُهُ And there is nothing like him. In this point number 10 here, is like point number 3. He said, and the saying, وَلَا يُشْبِهُ anam," And he does not re- resemble the anam. He said, the meaning of anam is the creation, al-khalq. And Allah does not resemble the creation. He said, so Allah the perfect and most high is free of any resemblance to the creation. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ السَّمِيءُ الْبَصِيرُ There is nothing like him, and he is the all-hearing, the all-seeing. Surah Ash-Shura, the 42nd Surah, Ayah 11. And he quotes the second Ayah, وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٍ And there is no equal for him. Surah Al-Ikhlas, the 112th Surah, Ayah 4. There is no equal for Allah. None is equal to Allah. None is equal or like Allah. Shaykh al said, So he, the perfect, is free from resembling his creation. And even though he has names and attributes which correspond to names and attributes of the creation in their wording, and in their meaning. However, in their reality, and in how they are, there is no resemblance between the two. There's no resemblance. Just for example, to clarify that point, he mentions that that Allah has certain names and attributes, and the creation, they have names and attributes which correspond for example, that Allah is al hayy the living one. And amongst the creation, there are those who are living, have the attribute of hayat, of life. So the Shaykh said, so the fact that these they correspond in their wording and their meaning, but however, in their full and true reality, and in how they are, there is no resemblance. I mean, the life of the Creator... The life of Allah is not like the life of His creation. And how and the, life, the life of the Creator and so on, the rest of His attributes are not like the attributes of His creation. Ibn Abdul Iz, in his explanation, he said, on this point, he mentions, he mentions a number of fine sayings from the Salaf in this regard. 
He begins by saying, Nu'aym ibn Hammad. If we remember, this was the great Imam, the one that Shaykh Falah mentioned, Hafizullah, this great Imam who was a contemporary of Imam Ahmad, and he was tortured for, they tried to force him to say the Quran was created, and he refused, and he was imprisoned and chained, and eventually he was chopped to pieces and killed, and remained firm upon that belief. Rahimahullah. So he mentions a quote, Ibn Abil Aziz mentions a quote from him on this point, وَلَا يُشْبِهُ anam And the creation do not resemble him. He said, Nu'aym ibn Hammad said, مَنْ شَبَّهَ اللَّهَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ خَلْقِهِ فَقَدْ كَفَرْ وَمَنْ أَنْكَرَ مَا وَصَفَ اللَّهُ بِهِ نَفْسَهُ فَقَدْ كَفَرْ وَلَيْسَ فِي مَا وَصَفَ اللَّهُ بِهِ نَفْسَهُ وَلَا رَسُولُهُ تَشْبِيهِ Quotes a fine quote from Nu'aym ibn Hammad that he said, Whoever declares that Allah is like anything from his creation, then he is an unbeliever. He's committed unbelief. And whoever denies anything from that which Allah has described himself with, then he has committed unbelief. And there is not in the attributes which Allah has mentioned for himself, nor in the attributes which his messenger mentioned for him, any resemblance. There is not any resemblance in, those, in what Allah has mentioned for himself or his messenger mentioned for him. So in other words, a summary, he summarizes here in that fine saying, the belief of the people of the Sunnah. And he mentions the belief of the two deviant groups, the Mushabbiha, and the Jahmiyyah, the Mu'attila. Those who deny Allah's attributes, the Jahmiyyah, the Mu'attila. And at the opposite extreme, those who affirm attributes for Allah, but go beyond bounds and say they like the attributes of the creation. So in this saying, Nu'aym ibn Hammad is mentioned both the deviant groups and the saying of the people of the truth. I mean, we affirm for Allah whatever he or his messenger have affirmed for him. And there's no resemblance with the creation in that. Then he carries on and said, and likewise, Ishaq ibn Rahawi, again the great Imam, contemporary of Imam Ahmad, Ishaq ibn Rahawi said, Whoever describes Allah and declares that his attributes are like the attributes of anyone from Allah's creation, then he is a kafir. He is a disbeliever in Allah, the tremendous one. Just repeat that, he said. Whoever describes Allah and mentions that his attributes are like the attributes of anyone from his creation, then he is an unbeliever. He is a disbeliever in Allah the Tremendous. Then the explainer said, and he also said, Ishaq ibn Rahway also said, the sign of Jaham and his companions, one who is known for the Jahmiyyah, the sect of the Jahmiyyah, the sign of Jaham and his companions is their claim against the people of the Sunnah and the Jama'ah and the lies which they have instigated that they say the people of the Sunnah are Mushabbiha that they declare Allah to be like his creation but rather it is just that they are Mu'attila it is just because they are deniers of the attributes then the explainer said, and this was the saying of a great number of the imams of the Salaf, that the sign of the Jahmiyyah is that they call the people of the Sunnah Mushabbiha. The Jahmis, those who deny Allah's attributes, they call the people of the Sunnah who affirm Allah's attributes, they say, you make Allah like the creation, you're Mushabbiha. Because there is none from the deniers of the names and attributes except that he calls the one who affirms them a mushabbih one who makes Allah like the creation so whoever denies Allah's names altogether then they are from the extreme apostates like the Qaramita and the philosophers And whoever says that Allah cannot be said, 
it cannot be said about Allah that he is alim, he has knowledge. And it cannot be said, they say, about Allah that he has power. Claiming that whoever calls Allah that, then he is a mushabbih. This is what they say. And they say his names are just metaphorical. Like the extreme Jahmiya. And then the Shaykh, he goes, goes on. And whoever wants to refer, he carries on. It's beneficial speech, but I'll leave it there. Then with regard to the next point, point number 11. Hayyun la yamut. Allah is the living one who does not die. Hayyun la yamut. The living one who does not die. Shaykh al-Fawzan said, His life, I mean the life of Allah, is a complete and perfect life, which does not suffer from any deficiency, nor any sleep. No deficiency, no naqs, and no sleep, no noam. And he quotes the ayah, the start of Ayat al-Kursi, Allah la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum la ta'khuduhu sinatum wa la nawm with the explanation Allah none has the right to be worshiped except him the ever living one the independent sustainer of all neither sleep nor slumber takes hold of him. So as we see in the ayah, that Allah affirms for himself two attributes, al-hayy, the ever-living, and al-qayyum, the independent, sustainer of all. And he denies and negates two things, which are the opposite of that, or which run contrary to that. He denies for himself sleep, or he denies for himself slumber, tiredness, and sleep. Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 255. Then the Shaykh quotes the second ayah. وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى الْحَيِّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتِ Surah Al-Furqan, Ayah 20, uh, Surah 25, Ayah 58. With the explanation, and place reliance upon the ever-living one who does not die. Shaykh Al-Fawzan said, so he denies for himself, or he negates for himself, a sinner, slumber, feeling dozy, feeling sleepy. And that means light sleep. Allah denies that. Sinner means light sleep, doziness, slumber. Allah denies that for himself. And he denies for himself, and he neg- rather he negates for himself, and gnome, which is deep sleep. And he den- he negated for himself death, al maut, because of the completeness and perfection of his life. He, the perfect and most high. Then, in a footnote, they quote two hadith in this regard. Firstly, from Abu Musa radiallahu an, who said, Allah's messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood amongst us with five sayings. So he said, Inna Allah Azza wa Jal la yanam wa la yambaghi lahu an yanam. The hadith. The hadith reported by Muslim in the book of Iman. That Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, stood and said, Allah the mighty and majestic does not sleep and it is not befitting for him that he should sleep. And then they quote the second hadith and from Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma that Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say Allahumma laka aslamt wa bika amant wa alayka tawakkaltu wa ilayka anabd wa bika khasamtu Allahumma inni a'udhu bi'izzatika 
لا اله الا انت انت تضلني انت الحي الذي لا يموت والجن والانس والجن والانس يموتون from ibn abbas radiyallahu anhuma that the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say o oh allah to you i have surrendered and in you i have truly believed and upon you i have placed my reliance and to you i turn and with your aid i dispute o oh allah I seek refuge in your might. None has the right to be worshipped except you. I seek your refuge from your misguiding me. You are the ever-living one who does not die. Antal hayyu alladhi la yamut. You are the ever-living one who does not die. Whereas jinn and mankind die. Reported by Muslim. Then Shaykh al-Fawzan continued, And sleep, and slumber, and death, these are deficiencies in life. And these are found, or these are attributes to be found in the creation. And the life of the creation is deficient, because he sleeps and he dies. People sleep and people die. Then he makes a point. So sleeping is a part of completeness with regard to the creation. But it is a deficiency with regard to the creator. And he explains how that is. He said, because a person who cannot sleep, they have an affliction affecting their health. Then he makes a point. So this shows the difference and the distinction between the attributes of the creator and the attributes of the creation. And here he makes a point that as reg- with regard to the attribute life, al-hayat, and sleep is a deficiency in that. Sleep and death is a deficiency in that attribute. And Allah is free from all deficiencies. So Allah is free, his life is free from death, his, fr- his life is free from sleep. And he makes the point but however, the creation, the people, if a person can't sleep, he's unable to sleep, that will be a deficiency in him. For that person, it will be a deficiency. Because he, won't be, he can't sleep, his body will get weak, he'll, he'll have an illness. He'll try and take tablets or see the doctor or something. It's a problem for him. In other words, that for a, for a normal healthy person, then sleep is something complete, uh, is a part of his completeness. That's with regard to the creation. Sleep is a part of completeness for him. But with regard to Allah, sleep is a deficiency. So this shows us the difference between the attributes of the creation, where sleep is something complete, of his completeness, and the creator, where sleep is a deficiency. And he said, and as for the two names, Al-Hay and Al-Qayyum, the ever-living, and the independent sustainer of all, and these are two attributes taken from the statement of Allah the Most High, Allahu la ilaha illahu al-hayyul qayyum, the beginning of Ayat al-Kursi. Allah, none has the right to be worshipped except Him. He is the ever-living, the independent sustainer of all. And He said, so Al-Hayy, the ever-living, means the one who has complete and perfect life. And Al-Qayyum is a word in intensive form. Then it goes straight on to the next point. Qayyumun la yanam. Point number 12, that Allah is the independent sustainer of everything who does not sleep. Sheikh Fawzan said, so the word Al-Qayyum, Allah's name, Al-Qayyum, the independent sustainer of everything. Sheikh Fawzan said, Al-Qayyum is the one who independently exists by himself and the one 
who sustains everything, the one who sustains everything else, the one who independently exists and has no need of anything, the one who is independent of everything, and the one who sustains everything else. Everything else is in a state of poverty and need of him and needs to be sustained by him, he the perfect and most high. So if it were not that Allah sustains the heavens and the earth and all of the creation, then they would all be destroyed and pass away. But however, Allah sustains them and guards them and provides for them. Giving them whatever will benefit them. So the whole of the creation is in need of him. And he quotes the ayah. Inna Allah yumsiku samawati wal ard an tazula wala in zalata in amsakahuma min ahadin min ba'di. Surah Fatir, the 35th surah, ayah 41. With the explanation, Allah holds the heavens and the earth so that they do not move away from their places. And if they were to move away from their places, then there is no one who could hold them after him. And then just finally, that's where Sheikh Fawzan ends this point as well. Just finally, from the exp explanation of Ibn Abdul Iz. He says, with regard to these two names that occur in these last two points, Al-Hayy, that Allah is the ever-living, and Al-Qayyum, that Allah is the independent one, who sustains everything. Then Ibn Abil Iz said, so these two names, all of the rest of Allah's perfect names revolve around these two, or all return back, and pivot upon these two. And all the meanings of the other names refer back to these two. And he explains how that is. He says, because the first, Al-Hayat, the attribute of life, it necessitates for him all the attributes of perfection. So no attribute will be missing from his from his attribute of life, except due to weakness in that life. So since the life of Allah, the Most High, is the most perfect and complete life, then affirming it means affirmation of every attribute of perfection for him. Then he moves on to the second name. And as for the name Al-Qayyum, then this includes the perfection of Allah's independence and the perfection of His power since He is the one who independently exists and has no need of anyone else in any sense and He is the one who supports and sustains everything else and there is no establishment for anything except unless he establishes it. So these two names gather completely the rest of the names. May Allah's name, Al-Hayat, that Allah is, Allah's name, Al-Hayy, the ever-living, that Allah's life, which is, we affirm for Allah, a perfect life, and a perfect life is that which has perfect attributes. So we affirm all the other attributes for Allah, and they all follow on from his life. And likewise, Allah's complete power and His complete independence of everything else is taken from His name, Al-Qayyum. So all the, all the attributes of relating to Allah's power and His sustaining everything and guarding and preserving everything else, they follow on from His attribute, Al-Qayyum. Which is why some of the people of knowledge, they mention these two as being the greatest name of Allah, al hayy Al-Qayyum. Some people of the knowledge mention that. They say because these two names, al hayy and Al-Qayyum, they gather all the rest of the names. That his name, Al-Hayy, refers to Allah himself, 
being characterized with every attribute of perfection. And if he did not have every attribute, attribute of perfection, then there would be deficiency in his life. If he didn't have perfect knowledge, and perfect sight, and perfect etc., etc., perfect hearing, perfect awareness. If he didn't have that, then his life wouldn't be perfect. So say so when we affirm for Allah perfect life, then it automatically means that we affirm all the rest of the perfect attributes for him. And likewise, his attribute al-qayyum means we affirm that he is totally independent of everything and that he alone supports and sustains everything else in, in existence. Now, any points of clarification? Point eight. With regard to point eight, وَلَا يَكُونُ إِلَّا مَا يُرِيدُ And nothing occurs except what he wills. Nothing occurs in the creation except what Allah wills. Which irada is that? Kawniya shar'iya. Allah's universal will, that which nothing can escape. No one can escape that. With regard to point number 12, Qayyumun la yanam. And with regard to the name Qayyum, then we translated it as the independent one. And this is because it's got two aspects. One is, I mean, the one who is independent of everything. He himself is independent of everything. And the second aspect of the meaning, the one who sustains everything else. So, something like, so the phrase, the independent sustainer of everything who does not sleep. Al Hay, all the attributes of Allah's self is that they refer back to his attribute of Al Hay, the ever living one. And as for his attribute Al Qayyum, that all his attributes of actions, then they refer back to that name Al Qayyum. Sheikh Falah, the brother mentioned Sheikh Falah, Hafizullah, he made this point. That's why some of the people of knowledge stress the importance of these two names, and that some of them even say that these are the two greatest, these two together are the greatest name of Allah. Some people say, some people of knowledge say. Because all Al Hay covers, therefore, all the, all the attributes of Allah's self, all his perfect attributes, they refer back to that name Al Hay. Because they are all aspects, of, all attributes referring back to his perfect life, or relating to his perfect life. And all of his actions. They relate back to his being the sustainer of everything. No. Some of the points that Sheikh Yahya mentioned, these were just, just some points which I noted down on the side of my book from Sheikh Yahya. Obviously, Sheikh Yahya, Hafidullah, he brought a lot of points and a lot of benefits, but just, just something which I got noted down here. Yeah. The first one and two was that we, we don't need to go into, just to re rephrase it as well, we don't need to go into deeply Allah's irada kawniya, Allah's universal will. I mean, what Allah has decreed and willed will occur in the creation, how the creation will be, how many mountains there will be, how what size they will be, 
etc., etc. We don't need to go deeply into that because it's not required from us. And how we are and how tall we are and so on, that's not requ- something required from us. It's not something to be rewarded or punished for. Rather, what's required from us is what relates to al-irada al shar'iyya Allah's legislation or will, that which corresponds to Allah's, that which Allah loves and that which Allah is pleased with and that which Allah has commanded. That's what we're duty bound to find out. The, the third point was with regard to the creation of evil or creation of that which is evil. And the Sheikh, the Sheikh said that somebody who comes along and says Allah did not create evil, then that person, obviously that person is deviant, because he, then he has to affirm everything has a creator. If a person, if he says Allah did not create that that thing which is evil, then somebody else must have created it. Then, so therefore he's affirming another creator along with Allah. And that's what they do. They say no, we are the the evil doers themselves, the unbelievers themselves, they create their own deeds. So they're affirming another creator along with Allah. That's why they are called the Magians. That's why the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam called the Qadariyah, the Magians of this Ummah. Because they affirm, or they say, they're saying amounts to affirming another creator besides Allah. So the Shaykh said, so whoever says that Allah did not create that which is evil, then he is a Qadari, a person, one of the Qadariyah, a Mu'tazili, one of the Mu'tazila. And the fourth point was, the reason why the Qadariyah went astray. Obviously, on the, other, on the other extreme, the reason why the Muraji, the reason why the Jabariya went astray as well. On the same point, because they don't distinguish between these two wills. Only the people of the, the Sunnah distinguish. The others, they only affirm one will for Allah. The people of the Sunnah they distinguish, and because they can't, they don't make a distinction. The Qadariya, the Qadariya went astray, and the Jabariya went astray. Because they don't distinguish between Allah's universal will and His legislational will, that which is pleased with, that which He is, that which is commanded and loves. And the fifth point was just with regard to creation of iblis, who is something. Iblis is one who is totally evil. Then Allah, just to make exa- an example, how that which is evil in creation, Allah created it for a wise purpose. So He mentions. The most striking example of that which is evil is Iblis himself. And the Sheikh said, even in his creation, there is tremendous wisdom. So through Iblis, through the devil, Shaitan, through him, Allah tests his servants, the people. I mean, who will obey Satan and who will disobey him? Who will obey Allah and disobey Satan and vice versa? So, and then he said, and Allah created evil so that Allah should be aware. And Allah knew before, as we know, Allah already knew. But so that the people have no excuse. Allah, then Allah created evil. And to see who will obey Allah and keep away from that evil. And therefore Allah will reward him. And who will fall into that evil and commit evil acts such that Allah punishes him. No. Regard the question is whistling haram or not? Allahu a'lam. Ask the people of knowledge. And just a quick summary of what we had then, to, a summary of some of the points that we had today. A brother pointed out to me a few weeks ago, this, it's good if you bring a quick summary at the end to make it easier for the, some people who find it hard to write notes quickly. So a quick summary of some of the points is firstly, we had that nothing occurs, whether good or evil, except. By Allah's universal will, al irada, al kauniya. So nothing, whether good or evil, occurs except with, except by Allah's universal will, and in accordance with His pre-decree. And the point that we distinguish, the people of the Sunnah distinguish between Allah's universal will and His legislational will. And we mentioned the four levels of pre-decree. Four levels that we have to affirm for affirmation of pre-decree. Allah's knowledge, His writing down, His willing, and His creating everything. The second point we had was that which exists which is evil. That which is evil in creation. Then from the aspect of its creation, 
it is not evil. I mean, we don't say that Allah, Allah's creation of it is evil. We don't say that. The thing exists and the thing is evil. But from the aspect of its creation, I mean that Allah created it from the aspect, it's not evil. Because Allah created it for a tremendous wisdom and as a test and a trial. The third point we had <coughs> was that Allah is greater than everything and he cannot be encompassed. People can know about Allah, but they can't encompass him with their knowledge. They can't cover him and encompass him, and totally catch him with their knowledge at all. And the fourth point we had was that there is nothing like Allah. And he is free of resembling his creation. When we say there's nothing like Allah, I mean there's nothing like Allah in his self, nothing like him in his attributes, and nothing like him in his actions. So he is free of resembling his creation in all those aspects. And the fifth point we had was that we affirm for Allah perfect and complete life. And we affirm his name, al Hay, which contains the attribute of complete and perfect life, an attribute of his self. And we affirm for him that he is al Qayyum, we affirm his name, al Qayyum. And from it we affirm the attribute, we affirm that he is independent of everything, and we affirm that he sustains everything. An attribute of his, related to his actions, that he sustains everything. And the sixth and last point, that sleep and slumber, or sleep and tiredness, are negated, we, are negated by Allah. Because they both negate and go against his perfect life. So they are denied by Allah in the Ayatul Kursi. Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu ala Muhammad